Chris Hazard, um, look, you, you, you'll not be a fan of any Conservative Prime Minister. I know you're going to tell me that. But um, who would serve best the interests of your constituents as Prime Minister? That's the question. Uh, none of them that we are best served well, by there's ourselves. there's going to be one. So, so who would best serve the interests well, of your constituents? That, that is for the British people and ultimately for the British government to decide. The, the one thing I'd say, Emma herself has just acknowledged that the protocol negotiations have nothing to do with Stormont, that that is a negotiation between Westminster and Europe. So, you know, we make the appeal again to the DUP to stop the reckless boycott of the institutions. You know, we have a time, when you look across the water, the farcical situation, it's incredulous that we're just about to have our fifth Prime Minister in six years lumbered upon us. This is the latest in a litany of economic and political crises brought on by Brexit, a Brexit that the DUP championed at every single stage. And ultimately, the people who suffer out of all of this, out of 12 years of austerity, you know, in the Brexit shambles, there's ordinary people, it's workers, it's families, and the DUP are exacerbating that by staying out of an executive, an executive that could come in and at least mitigate the problems that we're being landed with. In future. Um, here's... I don't think any British Prime Minister has ever been a friend to Sinn Féin, or indeed the people of Ireland. A British Prime Minister doesn't have any democratic mandate in the people of Ireland. We see that time and time again. The Brexit shambles has reiterated it and I make the point people here are best served by locally devolved ministers working for people on the ground our health service our teachers our civil servants all demand action we're facing in to a severe winter your show tonight will showcase that people want local ministers doing the job for them yeah, but, what do you but it, the protocol has been a flag of convenience for the DUP it simply does not stand up to fact nor reason to suggest that people are not being listened to. You know, Sefcovic has been here a number of times. The DUP, Emma, yourself, were just in with the Prime Minister last night in London. People are listening to it. I would actually it make the point that, unfortunately, in, with regards to Brexit, outcomes. Tory governments and Secretary of State have been listening to the DUP far too much. At every single turn, the DUP have backed their own horse. They have pushed us further into a harder Brexit and ultimately punished ordinary people, families and workers. So, so there's the argument. See in May, people voted for change and they backed parties, the, the likes of Sinn Féin, who pledged to put an additional billion pound into the Department of Health. That will help. Will it fix all the problems? From where? Will it fix all the problems? Let's avoid fantasy economics. Where are you getting that billion pounds from? It has to come from the UK, Westminster government. And it it is absolutely there. It is prioritised. Conor Murphy, as the finance minister, has spelled it out a number of times. It's simply not fair and it's not accurate to simply to wash your hands this and say it's up to the Treasury, it's up to Westminster. You have a black hole. We cannot rely on the Tories to step in this winter and save people. They simply won't, Emma and it's, it's simply disingenuous to suggest that somehow we don't have to bother turning up and storming it. We don't have to bother being an executive. The Tories in London will sort it out. Okay. Um, Emma, here's won't. the point. Well, see, the first thing that matters is it doesn't matter unless we have an executive. So it's hypothetical in the extreme to think, what are we going to do? We first need to get around the table. The DUP are trying to turn back the clock on the democratic process. The people come out in May, they voted for change. They want locally elected ministers in place because they understand we're going to have very difficult months ahead. Nobody's looking for a magical solution and they're certainly not looking to storm and to deliver it. What they want though is accessible ministers who are able to do the basics and that means standing up for families, standing up for workers and being able to help our small and medium enterprises. Okay. That's what I mean, they want.